here. All right, Symmetric, did I say it correctly? Yep, you are good. <laughs> I don't know if you heard the one with Carly, but like uh, beforehand, I was she was like it's it's Agar, and I was like okay, and she's like Jeff, say it. It's like Carly Agar, and then I was like okay, we're here with Carly Agar, and then I was like oh my oh. god, <laughs> <It's>... take. <laughs> <laughs> I left it on there because I I love people listening to you know, yeah, it's just it's just funny. I'll do anything for the joke. So anyways, yeah, for sure. So, so quick intro um i met you I, I think i can't remember who but we were you were commenting on some posts i don't know if they were mine if they were others and <laughs> then i looked at your profile and i and i reached out and i said i'd love to chat with you because the original idea here for this podcast was not to be talking with all these ccos and vps and been there well there's this that's good and we need to mix it up but I also just love people who are actually doing the work. Um, and I, you know, for me, I actually still as a fractional person go in and do that work occasionally, but you know, I can get incredibly biased after 20 plus years about how things should be and stuff like that. And there's all new ways of doing stuff and everything. So we chatted and, um, and I said, do you have a topic do you want to chat about? And you were like, yes. <laughs> going to be CS enablement. I'm like, that's fantastic because I've only talked about that once with somebody and we, and, uh, we need a refresh. It's been about a year or so and, uh, and things are fast, but as well, that was just one person's opinion on it. And I, and I, and then you came up with some concepts when we were talking, that I really want to dive into. Um, but first a quick 30 second, just a little chat about um, what you're doing these days and um, and why we should be listening to you talk about uh, being a CSM. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So at the moment, I have uh, close to eight years of experience in customer success, solutions yep. engineering, and technical account management as well. In yep. fact, I kind of got into customer success purely by accident. I have a <laughs> technical background in computer yeah. science and, um, you know, the first opportunity that I had out of grad school found me. So they were looking for their first technical CSM. And since then, I've never looked back. Um, so yeah, that opportunity was at CleverTap where oh, yeah. um, I was the first technical CSM um, able to really help build and scale their customer success presence globally. And, um, you know, fast forward maybe five and a half years or so, I ended up at <laughs> Linear B where I actually was again, the first CSM, but this time with the charter to not only be the CSM, but to build um, and lead the customer success function completely from scratch. Now, that was quite a roller coaster, quite a oh, challenge. I, as soon as you said first CSM, you probably saw me take down a note because there's, there's a whole podcast. <laughs> Right oh gosh <laughs> yeah i mean i learned so much i learned a lot about what works and also a lot about what doesn't work that's how you know. I, that is it i people all I, I tell people the only reason why i know this is because i broke everything like i broke <laughs> you learn so much through failure because you remember the pain I know it's it's painful, but you know you learn a lot, and um, you know it's a it's a good growing experience, I guess. You know, kind of looking back at it in hindsight. And after Linear B, now I actually have just started a job as a manager of the nice. scale customer success team at Braze, which is also actually in the Martech space, very similar to CleverTap. Yep. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to potentially becoming a CS expert. Um, you're all, you're I, eight years in. You don't. There's not potential. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, it's of course. You know, I'm really happy for what I've done and accomplished uh, so far. But it's a constant learning journey. So yeah, I mean, really happy to be here with you on this podcast, Jeff. Oh, it's fantastic. I have to ask: when you were that first CSM, were you doing the dreaded support and implementation and everything yes. else? Yes, 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 100%. Um, in fact, it was just, you know, it wasn't even like um, something that we questioned. It was just, oh, of course, like we have to do this. Like we're the ones doing this. So I was not only CSM, but I was also, you know, solutions engineer, you know, sales yeah. engineer, um, technical account manager, support lead. Oh my God, <laughs> like the number of hats that I wore and you know, I enjoy writing a lot. And yeah. so, you know, I was also like working on the content side quite a bit. 
um, you know, putting together technical uh, pieces, you know, oh case how to's, case studies. I mean, I definitely learned a lot and I'm really happy with a lot of the work I've done. But of course, yeah. I was kind of, you know, pulled in a million different directions. Yeah, it's, and, and, uh, and it's specifically with that computer science degree, which I'm going to immediately play for my daughter because she's going to do computer science. But as it's sort of like learning piano so you can then go play other instruments, right? Like, so... Um, there's, yeah. there's that concept of if you learn that, then everything else is a lot easier, right? But knowing computer science is uh, especially huge, and it's probably why you were getting pulled in all these different directions as well, too. So, uh, so it's, it's quite the skill set. So we don't, I don't see as many um, CS majors in CS. So that's, uh, that, that, that's really cool. Yeah, the double CS. <laughs> the double CS, right. Um, so when did you, and I'm sure it was in this role, but as you're getting ready for the next, when, when did you start really lasering in on this concept of CS enablement and it being a need for all CS? Yeah, interestingly, you know, most of my tenure in customer success, I had been working on CS enablement without actually realizing that it was, in fact, CS enablement. <laughs> um, yeah, it, you know, because again, you know, pulled in multiple different directions. Of course, I'm like preparing like talk tracks, slide decks, you know, to use for yeah. CSMs to use and onboarding, adoption related pursuits. Um, you know, I was uh, working with marketing to produce case studies, one yeah pagers, yep. um, you know, all kinds of things like that. And so I was doing all of that. And then kind of fast forward, maybe seven years in or so. And I was, you know, recently interviewing, looking for my next CS opportunity, mm -hmm. and really doing some soul searching and thinking about, you know, what aspects of CS do I really enjoy? Um, you know, because CS actually, you know, it's, been you know it has evolved so much like just there's, there's a lot of it right it, yeah. it, it, it reminds me of when i talk to um people in marketing like marketing is branding and analytics and demand gen there's just so much into it and now cs yeah. has gotten there as well too so exactly so it's there's such a spectrum of you know what you can do in cs like if you don't really want to be on the front lines with customers for instance but you still want to help, you know, build that CS backbone, for instance, you might go into CS ops and, you know, there's, you know, CS enablement. And then there's maybe like the more salesy side of things as well, you know, and there's like, you know, the professional services aspect of it too. And mm -hmm. you end mm -hmm. up working very closely with CS. So there's just so much in that spectrum. And when I reflected on some of my strengths, what I really enjoyed, writing is uh, one of my passions. I also really enjoy coaching and enabling others. And I also love designing process. So mm. I took those aspects and I really combined them with the fact that I had CS experience. I was like, hey, you know, CS enablement is actually, you know, probably a good home for me. Um, and so when I was interviewing, I actually interviewed for some opportunities that were CS enablement related as well. And so kind of preparing for those interviews um, and, and taking stock of my experience and what I had done in that, you know, arena without even realizing it made me um, realize or come to the conclusion that I was really passionate. I still am really yeah. passionate about yeah. CS enablement. And I really think that, you know, um, this is the backbone or I guess like the fundamental, I would say, concept to help CSMs be the best that they can be. And I think having seen kind of the chaos of startups, you know, CSMs, you know, putting together talk tracks on the fly, you know, slide decks, yep. like kind of on the fly, like having to like really just, you know, continuously evolve without that, you know, strong, I would say explicit support, CS enablement support, mm. and kind of going through that pain as well made me realize that, hey, we really need to focus and drill down on this and, and help CSMs with this material you know, outside of them having to just figure it all out on the fly. Oh, absolutely. And are you thinking about this as in a, a new CSM just coming on, and which is certainly a part of it, or are you versioning like the whole life cycle of a CSM? I would actually say that this is important for the whole life cycle of the CSM, actually starting up from recruitment of CSMs, oh, you know, yep. uh, leading into onboarding of new CSMs into their um, companies. And then, you know, there's ongoing enablement as well, you know, like uh, CS process and structure, you know, continuously evolves at various companies, you know, the product mm -hmm. evolves, customers evolve, and 
we need CSMs to be able to keep up with that. So it's yeah. actually something that is, I would say, super important um, throughout the life cycle of a CSM. So I'm guessing, sorry, I'm just laughing about the scenario and trying to get it out straight, but like, so I'm guessing that the first day of a CSM at a new job should not be a transition meeting to their new customers from the person who's oh, leaving. Oh God, no, 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 not at all. Oh my God, that just sounds like a nightmare because, oh my gosh. Oh, I've seen it. Oh, it's, oh my God, so bad. It's like, this person's leaving, like, oh my God, let's hire this other person and start them. And then like, it just happens like in the last day, it's like, oh, here's your new CSM. And it, uh -oh. it's just like worst possible scenario. It's just so bad. Yeah. yeah, you just feel like a deer in the headlights. And oftentimes, again, I've, I've pretty much exclusively been in startups in the past, right? So there's not even that documentation of, yeah. you know, what exactly are these customers' use cases? What are their goals? And so you're really like thrown into the deep end. So yeah, oh my gosh, that's... Oh, that's we call that's that OJT, on-the-job training, but it is it is, oh, it is not good. And, and just as before we start getting into your pillars and everything... Um, one of the reasons why it really resonated with me when I was, um, as a developer and then I got moved into like project management, which at the time Ooh. would be considered implementation of these days. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was, uh, the only develop former developer and I knew how all the ins and outs of this product was, and we were hiring, we we're going from like 30 people to a hundred that year. And so one weekend I just totally like sat down and just wrote like, it's, <laughs> it's called the PM guide. And it was literally everything you're talking about. It was like screenshots. And when this happens, and if this developer says two weeks, challenge him on it. And like just all of that fun stuff. So I, and that just like, I you probably use that thing as a template for 10 years after that and everything. So, wow. yeah, so it definitely the, it, it, it definitely <laughs> helps to do that work once and then just keep refining from it. So, um, so let's get in and talk about these three pillars and, uh, and let's, let's get deep into them here. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I can first talk a little bit about, you know, why customer success enablement, I mean, why is sure. it important and then give a high level overview of the three pillars as well. Yeah. And so that'd be great. Yeah, so from the CSM perspective, right, CS enablement is really all about streamlining the CSM workflow and really equipping them with what they need so that they are happier and more effective and kind of speaking to the pain that I experienced <laughs> in my past. They're not kind of on the fly, like on the job, like inventing things and, yeah. and kind of testing them live <laughs> with customers all the time, you know. Yeah. So really giving them the material and support to be the best CSMs that they can be. Um, and really add value, you know, where it matters most, right? And then yeah. from the company perspective, right, CSM enablement is all about improving, ultimately about improving the retention and growth of our customer base by, again, providing CSMs with the enablement or equipment that they need to be the most effective that they can be. And so this takes the shape of, of three pillars of CS enablement. And I actually learned about this concept from, um, there's an article out there, which um, is really insightful. Uh, this company called Desired Path had a chat with Melissa Median, who is an expert in the field of uh, sales and CS enablement. And she had put together, um, really smartly put together these three pillars. Oh, nice. Uh, First one, mm -hmm. so the first one is uh, recruitment, right? So it actually starts at the very, very beginning of the CSM's life cycle where the company should be very intentional about hiring the right talent based on the ideal CSM profile to ensure that their customers are successful. So that's the first pillar, Yeah. recruitment. That makes and total then, sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It always starts like from the very beginning. Right. Otherwise, do, you're do, is, is it part head. of the next pillar or is the interview process part of that recruitment? Because I, especially at startups, you see mm -hmm. there's there's no the, the worst thing you can do. It's also when your customers say the same thing to you, like, oh, they just asked me the same question. Right. There's no rhyme or reason. And everybody, for me, if I'm a CSM and I'm trying to decide whether to go to company A, B, or C, if a company doesn't have their act together on the interview process, I'm just kind of like, oh man, that uh, that is that is that what a life gonna be for the next two plus years? And, <laughs> so. 
Yeah, yeah. The interview process, again, is is very much a part of the recruitment pillar. And I'll definitely speak to it as we, you know, dive deeper into the pillars. But yes, yeah. it's really important for companies to, and I kind of alluded to this when I spoke about the recruitment pillar at a high level, but it's important for companies to define what their ideal CSM profile is like. We keep talking about the ideal <laughs> customer profile, the ICP and customer yeah. success, but it's also important, I've realized, um, to define what your ideal CSM profile is as well. You know, what are the, you know, of course you want somebody who has, you know, probably some CS experience or some transferable skills, but you're also looking for somebody who has, you know, the right qualities, you know, empathy, you know, like somebody who's a team player, somebody who is proactive, communicative. And so, you know, that really, you know, is the basis for an ideal CSM profile that it's really important for companies to have and use in their interviewing process to bring on the right CSMs so that they have kind of that right, I want to say like raw material, if you will, to Absolutely. equip and then, you know, build a strong, you know, CS enablement program and just as overall a strong CS program. I love it. And if, if if people haven't trademarked that term, then you should definitely go off there and right <laughs> after this call, ICP, <laughs> your ideal CSM profile, because a lot of companies, they just don't do it. We just need somebody in here. Make, make sure they either have the domain experience or they're smart or whatever. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so it really starts from the beginning with recruiting the right folks, you know, the ideal CSM profile. And then the second pillar is onboarding, right? So now that these, you know, um, new CSMs are on board or, well, they're starting to onboard, like we actually need to be, again, very um, structured, as structured as we possibly can be to equip CSMs with a robust plan to help them ramp up and begin contributing as quickly as possible, right? So that's the mm -hmm. onboarding pillar, right? Yeah. Um, getting them up to speed with the product, you know, with the best practices, you know, best practices in terms of how the CS function at that company operates, you know, domain specific knowledge. So for instance, I'm in the MarTech space. So, you know, it's important for me to be aware of, you know, MarTech best practices and mm -hmm. industry trends, um, and then finally, that third pillar is ongoing enablement, right? So even existing CSMs need to constantly like stay on top of, you know, training and assets to be effective in their roles so that ultimately the customer success function at the company owns a consistently strong portfolio of value realizing customers. Because when your CS team or your CSMs are equipped with what they need to be the best that they can be, your customers are successful. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the three pillars. That's amazing. Let's, let's get, I wanted to get your perspective on, on best practices. Um, and some of it gets into the, you know, we, we need somebody with domain experience or we need somebody with a lot of CSM experience. Do you feel that, do you have a certain feeling about which one's more important? Honestly, you know, I think it, it can depend on the company and the product and kind of, you know, where that company is in its, you know, I guess, evolution, mm. right? So I would say the high level answer is it depends, but classic CS answer, you, by the way, classic CS <laughs> answer, I know, but if you were asking me personally, from my experience, yeah. yes, domain knowledge is important. So those CS skills, uh, having those CS skills, that is important, right? It can really help CSMs hit the ground running without too much, you know, like, I guess, having to like, needing to, you know, go through this huge learning curve. Right. But at the end of the day, I feel like there's a lot of transferable skills where even if you don't have that CS, explicit CS background, you can actually take those skills and apply them to the CS domain if you're willing to learn. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's more, for me, I'm leaning more towards qualities matter more than mm. domain experience or skills. And when I say qualities, I'm talking about, you know, things like empathy, you yep. know, work ethic, humility, you know, being proactive, reliable, trustworthy, you know, that growth mindset, being right. able to be 
scrappy, resourceful. So I would actually lean towards those are more important. I, I agree a thousand percent because the, those skills are a lot harder to train versus, you know, picking up best and best practices, learning mm -hmm. about the, mm -hmm. the industry and things like that. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like in the initial days of, you know, when I was interviewing, I realized that I was asking a lot of questions relating to domain experience and CS experience while I feel like I was missing out on, you know, asking those leading or probing questions into, you know, empathy and, and humility and being proactive. So for instance, a really good question to ask a potential CSM is, you know, how would you say no to a customer and, mm. you know, things like that, right? Because that can really say a lot about, you know, like how well can this person do as a CSM, even if they don't necessarily have that CS experience. So I would actually lean towards qualities are more important because they're actually so much, as you said, so much harder to learn and, you know, incorporate than like domain experience. Absolutely. No, no, that, that's really great insight. And uh, I love the, the CSM questions as well, too. I, you can find out who are the ones who are just going to say, yes immediately or then they don't like to say no and oh my god we're, you know if we're getting judged if we're getting kpi'd on renewals i'm afraid to say no and then you know you got to balance all of those those things back and forth and everything so uh, it, it really comes out in the interview whether they have these inherent csm skills where they're able to push back if they need to be yep. uh, things like that absolutely awesome yeah for sure so what do you th what is um what do you think are some of the hard points about rolling a system like this out? Um, or, or, or maybe even say, what was some of the hard points about putting to this together and then rolling it out to, to your team? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So again, you know, I was sort of doing this, um, or like putting together this CS enablement program, not even realizing that it was a CS <laughs> enablement program. It's like it was everybody really... just needs to do this, right? <laughs> yeah. So for me, it was really, I think, an unquestionable part of the process of making sure that my CSMs were effective. And a lot of, you know, how I got to or arrived um, at the need for this program was just seeing how, you know, I was at a startup and, you know, the CSMs on my team were, you know, we were we were all sort of just figuring out stuff on the fly in terms of what works for customers during onboarding, what works to get them to adopt. And so, you know, we were doing so much of this on the fly stuff that we really, you know, were not able to um, be very predictive about, you know, how are we going to do in the long term, right, with retaining and growing our customers, right? Because right? we're always like constantly like, you know, changing your approach and doing things on the fly, like you don't really know, like, are you being effective? Like, right. are you going to continue to be right. effective? You know, well, I, I, you know, look, I'm sure churn numbers can <laughs> tell you if some stuff's being effective. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, for sure. And, and you know, unfortunately, the thing with churn numbers, though, is that they're lagging indicators. So you Absolutely. kind of like realize after the fact and you're like, Oh, oops. Well, that didn't work. Okay. And then, but then if you, if you keep looking at that and you continue to like be doing stuff on the fly, you're not really like, you know, um, taking stock of the problem and, and, um, solving for it in a systematic way. Right. And so I was like, okay, enough of this sort of just being all over the place. Like we actually need to be very intentional and, um, you know, proactive in, determining what our approach will be with customers. And for mm -hmm. that, we need our CSMs to be enabled with, you know, material uh, that helps them to be the best that they can be material training tools, you know, like the whole gamut yep. to help them actually be effective. So that's when I started putting all of this together um, in order to elevate our CS function. And so that's when I kind of started thinking about, okay, like, you know, what is the ideal CSM profile for recruitment? You know, like, how can we help, you know, new CSMs get up to speed quickly so that they can begin contributing as quickly as possible? Because being at a startup, we really just didn't have as much of the luxury of time. So we needed CSMs to be able to get up to speed as quickly as possible with the product and, you know, Mm -hmm. um, how we as uh, the CS function operated. So, you know, what material do I need to put together yep. to help 
CSMs on board. So, you know, and again, we were a startup. So I put together a spreadsheet with, you know, um, you know, helping CSMs get up to speed with the tools that we used in our CS org. Um, right. And then the process that, you know, uh, we were following and, uh, you know, product training and, um, you know, like, material that they could go through in terms of how do we approach onboarding how do we approach adoption how do we right. approach renewals and expansions and it was sort of very limited a very limited amount of material because again startup you know we were just like beginning to put all of this oh, yeah. together, but kind of you know collating it together and bringing it in one space or like mm -hmm. one specific area for new CSMs to learn. I think that was a big win for us. Maybe it sounds kind of trivial, you know, to like no, no, folks at bigger companies, but that was a big, I think, first step towards like yeah. putting together our CS enablement program, right? And it's funny because I don't know if this happened to you, but like when you hire somebody with some experience and they come in and they ask all these questions and you're like, <laughs> yeah, we're new. We don't really have all that yeah. talking value. It's so embarrassing. It's, it's so bad. So if you, cause that was a spreadsheet. Now let's just say, you know, ideal scenario, right? Unlimited budget. How would you structure mm -hmm. tools, all this fun stuff, videos? How would you put together that, that CSM onboarding, uh, you know, day day zero through I don't know day nine or whatever you want to call. It. I hate throwing end dates because it should be continuous. But yeah, so they like you know, Symmetra, come in here and just just put together whatever you want. And and what would that look like? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I've also actually mentioned this in the CS Insider article that I wrote oh, about, right, which we'll link to in the uh, show um, notes. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Let me take that. Yeah, note. definitely. But yes, unlimited budget automatically means I would certainly invest in a learning management system. Um, absolutely. Having, <laughs> having experienced what onboarding with you know a robust learning management system um, is like at Braze for instance because mm -hmm. Braze is actually um, a much bigger company than you know the startup that I was yeah. the startups that I you know um, were in previously and so they actually have a very structured comprehensive onboarding that they deliver through a learning management system and kind of you know seeing the difference between that and you know what I'd gone through at startups again not definitely not you know like blaming startups I mean you can learn a lot at a startup but of course it does come with kind of that chaos right so yeah. you know seeing what it is like in a very streamlined uh format delivered by a learning management system I would absolutely invest in one of those and yeah, absolutely start putting all of the material in that. And um, in fact, the learning management system also has like a content management system integrated that's even better. Yep. Um, you can really mix it up and, you know, have like training videos, you know, oh, quizzes, courses, the whole thing. Quizzes. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, because that makes it so much easier, right? Because definitely one of the gaps we had in that spreadsheet was, you know, I didn't really have anything uh, like a knowledge check in there. And I feel like that's so important to be able to like recap and and really test you know this new CSM's understanding of have they really understood the material where are their gaps so they can easily address those as quickly as possible so I would certainly invest in an LMS and um, you know like start curating material to put into um, that LMS to make it much easier on not only the CSM but the company like to help them feel like, okay, like I've got this, you know, amazing tool that is going to help enable my CSMs as quickly as possible. Oh, no, no, that's, that's huge. And that could, that's a huge project too, right? Just putting that all together and oh, the yes. content and all, all of that stuff and everything. But if people realize that they would ultimately get, you know, better renewal rates, better internal yeah. employee satisfaction and, and all that fun stuff. Um, people would make the investment, but especially when you're small and you don't have the budget, it's, it's, yep. it's, it's, it's harder to do. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. So I would say definitely, you know, start somewhere. Like if you're at a startup or a smaller company that doesn't have the resources, you know, it, it may not make sense to, you know, get a learning management system right away. But if you put in the groundwork through even something as simple as a spreadsheet, you at least have a starting point. And, you know, over time, you'll begin to understand where the gaps are. And as you grow and evolve, you'll know exactly 
how to implement uh, all of this material in a learning management system and mm -hmm. and um you'll be able to you know move forward from there so, absolutely yeah and, and you know a lot of companies these days have confluence i mean you can certainly go in yeah. and you know oh, put yeah. a confluence thing together as as a in-betweener before you can do the the lms and then you can just keep adding to it and things like that as well too so great oh yeah certainly any any other strategies or um, tips and tricks uh, along the way that uh, and I'll link to it in the article that you might have referenced in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I can probably give an example of how I approached, you know, onboarding the onboarding pillar. So sure, you yeah. know, like I mentioned, um, I basically had this spreadsheet that I put together. You know, yeah. it's, you know and um, an onboarding plan for new CSMs, where that spreadsheet had mapped out a checklist of items to get through in the form of readings, audio, video recordings, and even live meetings saying, hey, like reach out to this team member, they can train you oh, yeah. in Salesforce, they can train you in churn zero, so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. I had put together this plan with a checklist for about, you know, two weeks. So the first two weeks, you know, considering an eight hour work day. Yep. And so this plan covered, uh, I would say what are some of the important areas in onboarding so that is tool onboarding process training and you know training resources so not just the product but domain specific training and you know training in terms of cs best practices and so with this onboarding plan in place right and and really the need for it was surfaced by the fact that um, the first CSM I had brought on board, we didn't have such a spreadsheet at all. And so it definitely was a little bit more complicated and yeah. messy, you know, to get this CSM up to speed, even though she was super smart and she was really up to the task and she hit the ground running. I felt like, OK, I need to do more as, you know, the leader of the CS team to, you know, get them to a point where they are ready to contribute as quickly right. as possible. And they have a, I guess, as comfortable of an experience getting to that point, right? And so that's, you know, what prompted me to put together this, um, you know, spreadsheet. So second CSM onwards, you know, I, I provided the spreadsheet and I said, hey, like this should help you, you know, get up to speed. And so when I looked at the data, like this first CSM, it took about a month for her to, I would say, ramp up and get to a point where she could contribute versus with the spreadsheet, you know, simple as it seemed, the second CSM was able to get up to speed faster in about, you know, two weeks. And yeah. so even though it was sort of, you know, the data wasn't necessarily perfect and the spreadsheet was also not perfect. We were just starting out with this approach and seeing how it worked out. Yep. You know, it did, like, I could see, like, we could see the difference in in terms of what the CSM ramp up time was like. Oh, yeah. and it's so, a 2x improvement. Absolutely. Yeah, right? 2x then, think, improvement. If you, you know, think about a team when you're scaling up and you got to bring on, like, 10 people or even globally. Yeah. You start growing and growing and growing. If you don't have this in place, then that it it just really eats away at everything, right? Customer satisfaction, budgets, all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And you know, we were also beginning to see that reducing CSM ramp up time ultimately was leading to increased ARR stability as well, and you know, therefore improved customer retention. So we were beginning to see that data kind of you know, falling in place as well. And as we scaled, you know, it was just quite clear that we needed to invest more time in in putting together this this onboarding plan for new CSM. So I would say, you know, even though it wasn't like this perfect, robust, streamlined approach with an LMS, it was a start and yeah. it made a difference. And so I would encourage everybody who is, you know, looking to, you know, get started putting a CS enablement program in place, to even just start small, you know, start incrementally with baby steps and keep evolving because you will definitely see the small wins and you'll continue to improve over time. You just got to start somewhere. So I think you can't wait for the big bang. You just got to just iteratively yeah. roll it out. I'm really glad yeah. you brought up the increased AR. I actually was going to ask that, but then I was like, I don't want to put you on the spot because you would be like, no, I was just rolling this out for the first time. But that's fantastic that you started seeing actual customer metrics that were being improved and um, yeah. this out. That's great. 
Yeah, certainly. So again, even if you are kind of just starting out, you know, it's always nice to try to tie it back to, you know, your big data, you know, your North Star metrics and yeah. CS. And again, your data may not be like perfect in the beginning. You're still trying to like understand like, you know, benchmarks and where you stand as a CS function and all of that. But, you know, like you'll you'll start seeing patterns over time. So, you know, got to start somewhere and um, always keep that high level um, in mind. Awesome. Well, that's that might be a great place to end. But before we do that, I want to ask if you had any other sort of inputs or things top of mind that you wanted to to add in. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I'll say um, you know a few words about the ongoing enablement pillar as oh, well. Oh, that would be great. That that's great. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we definitely spoke about you know the ideal CSM profile. You know, getting you know the right, basically being able to hire the right talent. Mm -hmm. Um, which really helps in enabling them as well. And so we also spoke about, you know, the onboarding pillar of, you know, getting these new CSMs up to speed and in a place where they can contribute as quickly as possible and, you know, where the learning experience is as comfortable for them as possible. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's also the ongoing enablement pillar of um, being able to continuously train and support even existing CSMs because your product's going to evolve, your customers are going to evolve, their use cases are going to evolve. Absolutely. And so it's really important to, this isn't just like a one and done thing, right? Like after onboarding, that's it, you know? And, and that is actually what I typically see. We got to launch and then that's it. So mm -hmm. the continual training, especially in startup land where just products changing every two weeks or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's really important to be able to provide, you know, uh, continuous training in terms of tools, you know, process, you know, CS best practices, like your function best practices, because your function is constantly evolving to support your evolving product and customers. Um, you know, training in, you know, again, the domain is continuously evolving as well. So mm -hmm. domain specific training. Um, and yeah, in terms of uh, the product as well, the product is also continuously evolving. So, you know, being able to set a cadence, you know, ideally with your product marketing team, or I guess whoever in your company is responsible for mm -hmm. that. Um, it's really nice to partner with them and help establish a cadence for all of this training. And one, you know, really important aspect, another really important aspect of this ongoing enablement pillar is tangible assets. So mm. having customer playbooks for various touch points <laughs> of the customer journey. So slide decks, talk tracks, you know, you're not just figuring stuff out on the fly as a CSM, you know, exactly what the talk track is for various, you know, customer situations and scenarios. So, you know, that's an important type of asset. So yeah, customer absolutely. playbooks, yep. competitive battle cards that are meant mm. for customer success, not sales. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> so funny because it does come up in, in, in yeah, exactly. Also, what are peers in my domain doing? Like, oh yeah, well, we have that right here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so the way that you, you need to alleviate, you know, objections or, or, you know, do objection handling as a CSM is very different from how you might do it if you were in sales. And so, you know, I'm speaking from the personal experience and pain of having to borrow, <laughs> you know, from, you know, competitive battle cards that were designed yeah. for sales and you don't want to sound all, you know, sales. Salesy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you definitely want to lead with empathy and and of course also have that high level you know understanding of okay like i need to deliver value to the customer so competitive battle cards that are meant for customer success are so so helpful you know objection handling assets for various situations Absolutely. So that's a type of asset that i think is really important within this ongoing enablement pillar and then external facing material that you can share with customers. So feature one pagers, use case, how to's, you know, technical pieces, mm. you know, you can work very closely with your, again, your product marketing team, maybe your content team, um, learning and development. If, you know, the company is, you know, big enough to have, you know, that sort of, um, yeah. you know, org. So yeah. that's really important oh. and helpful too. Um, cause you know, again, speaking from the pain of, you know, customers will often ask, you know, why, you know, what can I do with this feature? I see that it's there. I kind of understand where it's going to get me, but how do I make use of this? And mm. you know, constantly having to like put together like snippets on the fly to share with customers and not yeah. having like a, you know, 
like one-stop shop for me to like get that information or for the CSMs to get that information shared with customers, that was painful. So again, having this, you know, really nice, you know, finessed external facing material that you can share with customers. And then of course, thought leadership content that of course benefits the company as well. You know, you work together with marketing to build customer case studies, you know, mm. snackables, like really short snippets that, um, are really impactful and can teach customers, you know, how to elevate their use of the platform. So thought leadership content, and finally, like business review tools, right, to make it really easy to communicate the value your solution is providing to customers. I mean, you that is super important. And that's something I learned, um, again, the painful way, like if your customers <laughs> are not aware of the ROI they're getting from your oh, product, then they won't renew. Absolutely. They're not going to renew. And yeah. it's super painful because, you know, there's only so much you can scramble to say, but this, this, that, you know, like you, you saw this, you, you did that or your team achieved this, you know, at the last minute. So if you're proactive about constantly making customers aware of the value they're seeing, then they're much more likely to renew. And, you know, again, as your CS team scales and you add on more customers, there's only so much time that CSMs have to like manually put together like an EBR deck or mm -hmm. you know, business review um, material or calculate the ROI. So if we're able to provide like plug and play business review templates, right. you know, like a little number crunching machine to like put together like what the ROI is. And this is something that we were actually working on building at my previous startup, this ROI calculator where, you know, we had all of this data on the back end. All we needed to do was to like, you know, work with engineering to write a script to really spit out like what are the improvements that the customer right. is seeing and tie it back to their ROI. So again, super hacky, but it's a start, right? Right, and, right. Yeah, right. And well, I love it. And your, C, your, your CS background is coming out there. So uh, yeah. this, it was great to see there. Um, and can't, you know, a thousand times agree on, on all of those points, especially about just providing value along the way and just always not waiting for the big EBR QBR, right? If you're seeing, you know, as I always say, if you're you're meeting with somebody and and they're like, oh, let's we really want to see some movement in this area, and then a couple of weeks later you see this growth, like don't wait two months to show them that, right? Wait, you're like, hey, quick loom video, look at this, here you go, exactly. don't, don't need to respond, you know, just here you go, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's as simple as that. And so, you know, being able to enable CSMs, okay, here's a tool that, you know, I worked with engineering to create that just spits out the customer's ROI. Now, all you need to do is plug in the customer's account IDs and get, you know, these numbers and start sharing it with your customers, like, you know, with a little bit of automation. So yeah. that saves so much time for CSMs and immediately, you know, helps their customers understand the value they're getting. And, Therefore, like, this is what I mean, like, this is the crux or essence of enablement, because you're saving CSM so much time, um, and also still helping them be so effective at their mm -hmm. role, right? Absolutely. Yeah, especially oh. if they're, you know, you've got 30 customers, and you're trying to prepare all this data, having mm -hmm. a script like that, or, or just whatever, you have these tools in place to be able to enable them to be able to actually have those value conversations because in the meantime they're not able to focus on the value they're they're having to do all of this legwork to get all of this data and all this all these points absolutely yeah exactly exactly so you know customers are are now understanding the value they're getting your csms are not burning out so yeah win-win oh, fantastic so let's let's do this um because i just looked at the clock and i was like oh my god we're sure. still talking uh um let's uh, i'll link to your linkedin profile and we'll sure. put a link to your cs insider work as well too um let me ask a quick question since we're we're heading into the at least for us here in boston the the deep winter and just got a snowstorm what is your big winter plan uh for you any, any fun stuff going on that's non-cs related <laughs> You know what? I actually just got back from that fun stuff. So I was actually <laughs> traveling, um, you know, towards the end of November uh, up yep. until the end of December. So I actually went to Singapore. I went oh my to God. Bali in Indonesia. And then I went to India, which is where a lot of my family is located. And so it was really nice to, I guess, escape the deep winter of, I mean, I know I'm in California and, you know, I shouldn't really be complaining compared to like a Boston winter or anything <laughs> like that. But you know, nevertheless, it was really nice to be kind of away from like the the cold, cold winter and, and kind of be in these more tropical settings where, you know, 
kind of winter is a nice time to go because it's yeah. going to not be as hot and humid. So it was really nice to go there, you know, travel, you know, see some new places, relax a little bit, you know, kind of disconnect from all the hustle and bustle. And oh, you know, I'm so jealous time with yeah. family and, and friends as well. So yeah, that was my fun winter. And now I am kind of back to reality, Um, you know, getting up to speed. At I can grade. tell you're, you're all, all business. You're just ready to go in and just, uh, yeah. that's awesome. It shows what a good break does. Now you're like super ready to go in and start tackling all of these issues and everything. That's yeah, great. yeah, for sure. And I think it's it's super important for everybody to recharge, even though I know it can be so hard to disconnect. Um, I feel like it really does make a huge difference. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's a great point to leave off. Um, we're going to uh, we'll hold you hold on for a second. I'll stop the recording. But thanks so much. And we really appreciate all this insight. And we'll make sure to link out to a bunch of this stuff. So just hold on one quick second here. Sure.